Welcome to this video. We're going to go through a question on differentiation, a modeling question, and here we are trying to use our skills to answer an exam question. So let's read th through the question first. A manufacturer produces pain relieving tablets. Each tablet is in the shape of a solid circular cylinder with base radius x millimeters and height h millimeters. Given that the volume of each tablet has to be 60 millimeters cubed, express in terms, express h in terms of x. Before I start to answer this question, I'm just going to quickly scan through the rest of the question and see that in part b, I'm asked about the surface area. So I've got a cylinder where we need to deal with the volume and we need to deal with the surface area. So for my GCSE knowledge, the first thing I want to try and do is write down what is the volume, the volume of a cylinder. And I also want to write down what is the surface area, the surface area of a cylinder. In order for me to do this, I'm going to go back and think about what is the area of a circle. So what is the area of a circle? And we should all know that's pi r squared. And what is the circumference? circumference of a circle and you would remember that as most students remember as pi d uh, but in this case as we're using the radius um, within this question I want to rewrite this as 2 pi r and from here I can think about the volume of a cylinder now just to make this very very clear I've got an example of a cylinder here my water bottle and um, to think about what the volume is just get the area on the top and multiply that area by the length so in this case the length is h so i'm going to use h to actually represent what the length is and my radius for my gcse formula we're just going to get the area of a circle which is pi r squared and h that gives me the volume of a cylinder as far as the surface area is concerned so for a surface area i've got the top circle and i've got the bottom circle so there's two circles um, so I'm, i know i'm going to have two circles so um, let's say area of top circle and plus area of bottom circle. So that's definitely the two surface, surface areas. But also I've got this curved surface area. So the way I think about this is use the circumference on the top. So use the circumference on the top and then just literally unwrap the circumference all the way down. So the circumference on the top is 2 pi r. Um, so I'm just going to call this firstly curved surface area. So that's basically what we're looking for. So surface area of a cylinder is the curved surface area, which is 2 pi r times by the height, which is h, plus two circles. So areas of two circles, so 2 pi r squared. I've got the pi r squared from here. I've just got two lots of it. And you need to know this. You need to know this formula volume of a cylinder and you also need to know the surface area of a cylinder. I've actually derived this for you from GCSE but when, you, when you've got this question in the exam write that down straight away and write this down as well and then obviously we'll take things forward from there. If you don't know those two you can't do this question so you need to make sure you memorize these and you also understand where they come from. This is the explanation but what I want you to really make sure you know is the volume of a cylinder and also the surface area of a cylinder. Those are the key parts of this um, question, the key tools that we need to answer this question. So let's do part A now. Express h in terms of x. Now we're using the volume, we've, we've been told that the volume is 60. So using this, let's write an expression for the volume. V equals pi r squared h. Now in this question, the radius is x millimeters. You've been given x to represent the radius. So v pi r squared h pi x squared h. That's your volume, an expression for the volume. You've been told in the question that the volume is 60 millimeters cubed. So let's just write that down as v equals 60. Let's pop that in. 60 equals pi x squared h. And we want to express h in terms of x. So that means let's make h the subject. How do I do that? Divide both sides by pi x squared. So h equals 60 over pi x squared. h equals 60 over pi x 
pi x squared. And that's the I've done part A. Now moving on to part B, show that the surface area of a tablet is given by this expression. Now you've been given this expression, and even if you can't do part B, that shouldn't stop you from attempting part C, D, and E. You've been given part B. Now let's see how we can actually handle this. So I'm going to use A to represent my surface area, um, as that's what the exam question is doing. A equals, let's use our GCSE knowledge, 2 pi, my radius now is x, because as you can see here in the question, 2 pi xh plus 2 pi x squared. I've just literally taken it from here. If you notice that in this expression, I've got a in terms of x. In this expression, I've got a in terms of x. However, we've got a problem. The problem is this h. I, would, I don't want the h there. I want everything to, to be in terms of x. So what do I do? Let's use part a. I, I know what h is in terms of x here for this question. So I'm just going to pop that in. So a equals 2 pi x instead of h. I've got 60 all over pi x squared plus 2 pi x squared. And at this stage, I'm going to do a little bit of cancelling. So I'm going to basically say that numerator denominator multiplying across, so I can say that pi and pi, they cancel out. This x will cancel out with x at the bottom at the denominator. So this will become, instead of x squared, x to the power of 1. And at this stage, I can say that a is equal to 2 times 60. That's 120. And on the denominator, I just have the x remaining, plus 2 pi x squared. And if you notice, if you notice, that's exactly what I want. I wanted to show a equals 2 pi x squared plus 120 all over x. That's exactly what I've got here, just in a different order. But I can easily rewrite this into what I wanted. So that's part B done. Moving on to part C, a manufacturer needs to minimize the surface area of a tablet. So here is where the minimization comes into play. This is where you need to really think about what the question is asking you to do. Use calculus to find the value of x for which a is a minimum. As soon as you see the word minimum, or if in other questions, maximum, turning point, so any of those words, so let me just write them down. Minimum, minimum, maximum, turning point, stationary point. At any of these words, the first thing you should be thinking of is, okay, I need to think about dy by dx equaling zero. Okay, because I know that dy by dx is equal to zero. For a turning point, a minimum, a maximum, that's the first thing that should be coming in your mind. So how would I deal with this? I want to work out the value of x for a. So a is obviously the function I'm using. Let me just rewrite that down here. So a equals, this is given to us in the question, a equals 2 pi x squared plus 120 over x. As I'm going to be differentiating, I want to rewrite this in index notation. So I'm going to rewrite this as 120 times x to the power of minus 1. So plus 120 times x to the power of minus 1. That is just basically what was given to me in the question. I will need to differentiate this now. So dA by dx is equal to, differentiate each term, times by the power, 4 pi. Remember, pi is just a number. So 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. Take away 1 from the power, x to the power of 1. Minus 1 times 120 is minus 120. Take away 1 from the power, so that's minus 2, to the power of minus 2, x to the power of minus 2. I've differentiated, and now is where I'm going to use my knowledge of minimum. So I would expect you to write at minimum, at minimum, dA by dx is equal to 0. You need to write down, you need to write that down, otherwise, you know, you're just doing maths for the sake of doing maths. You have to narrate your thinking to the examiner. So once you've written this down, I'm just going to say, okay, so that means that dA by dx is equal to 0. So 0 equals 4 pi x to the 1, I don't need to write the 1 down, minus 120 x to the power of minus 2. Okay, and now it's just a case of solving for x. 
So I'm going to carry this on on this side. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 0 equals 4 pi x minus 120 all over x squared. And then I'm going to multiply every term by x squared. So 0 times x squared is 0. 4 pi x times x squared is 4 pi x cubed. Um, this term times by x squared is just going to be minus 120. I want to solve for x, so let's move this minus 120. Let's add minus 120 to both sides. So 120 equals 4 pi x to the power of 3. Let's divide by 4 pi. So that's 120 over 4 pi is equal to x cubed. And at this stage, I can just say that x is equal to the cube root of 120 over 4 pi. OK, if I really wanted to, I could just simplify that a little bit more and say that x is equal to 120 divided by 4 is 30. So that's going to give me the cube root of 30 over pi. And at this stage, you can type then a calculator and work out what the actual value is. So in my calculator, I'm just going to say um, square root, fraction button, 30 um, all over pi. And that gives me the value of, let me try that again, cube root, sorry, cube root, shift, cube root, 30 over pi. And that gives you the value of 2.1, 2.121, 5, and just goes on. I'm just going to round this to 2.12. To 2dp. You haven't been asked to round this. I'm just going to round it to two decimal places and explain what I'm rounding. So that's my answer. 2.12, the value of x, when the radius is 2.12 millimeters, I am saying that the surface area is the minimum at which I have a volume of 60 millimeters cubed. That's what I'm saying for part c. Now, part D is asking you to actually work out what is that surface area. What is the surface area when your radius is 2.12? That's what part D is asking us. And that's such an easy question. All you have to do is sub this value of x into the original equation for the surface area, which is this thing here. OK, so let's, let's do that. A equals... 2 pi x squared, so that's 2 pi. Instead of using x, I'm just going to use this. Um, so that's the um, third root of 30 over pi. So that's basically my x, x squared. 2 pi x squared plus 120 all over x. And that's my x there. So that's third root of 30 over pi. OK, and you might be wondering, so why are you doing that for? Why don't you just use 2.12? The reason why I'm saying that is because on my calculator, I've already got the answer. I've got the answer. I'm just going to use the answer button. So that's 2 times pi times my answer squared plus 120 all over answer. And that gives me 84.8428. And then I've been asked to round this to the nearest integer. So that, that rounded to the nearest integer is 85. And as this is an area, I would probably want to write this as 85 millimeters squared to the nearest integer. So that's part D done. And part for part E, we've been asked to show that this value of A is a minimum. So to do that, we're thinking about the second differential. If the second differential is greater than zero, then we know it's a minimum. If the second differential is less than zero, then we know that it will be, it will be a maximum. So let's use our function for A. That's my first differential. I'm just going to write that again for you. dA by dx is equal to 4 pi x minus 120 x to the power of minus 2. Let's differentiate each term. D2A by dx squared is equal to 4 pi minus 2 times by minus 120 is plus 240 x to the power of minus 3. At this stage, all you need to do is sub in your value of x, which you got from part c, into here and see what you get. 
So D2A by DX squared equals 4 pi plus 240. My value of x, I'm going to use this value here, 2.1215, all raised to the power of minus 3. If I put that in my calculator, if I put that in my calculator, I will get, let's quickly do that, 4 times pi plus 240 um, times by 2.1215 raised to the power of minus 3, and you get the value of 37.701. 37.701. Now, this value is a positive number because the second differential is a positive number. You can therefore say that we definitely have a minimum value of A. And that's all you have to say as a concluding statement to get all of the marks. As d2a by dx squared is positive, which I've shown here, we have a minimum value of A. Value of A. A and that's the whole question.